Pressure mounting on Chancellor Jeremy Hunt to deliver a voter-friendly budget in the middle of a recession. He hinted yesterday that tax cuts will be announced, but only in what he called a responsible way. Well, we are joined now by Talk TV's chief political commentator, Peter Cardwell, and Conservative councillor for Epping, Holly Whitbread. Peter, good morning. Good morning. Lovely to see you back. Oh, thank you very much. She's had a baby. She looks a lot better than you. You look <laughs> terrible, man. Have you not slept all night? What's Thanks, going? Jeremy. It's, it's always good to feel so welcome here on a Monday morning. Don't you listen to him. Right, Peter, why is this budget so significant? Well, it's reason? the budget, so yes. it's significant anyway, but it's also the last major push the last fiscal event before the mm. uh, election, of course. It's the last roll of the dice for the Conservatives. They're consistently 20 or so points behind. But for Jeremy Hunt, lots of pressure, especially from backbenchers, to, backbenchers, to bring down taxes. Now, how will he do that? Will it be mm. through national insurance? Will it be through general taxation? National insurance is cheaper because fewer people pay it. Pensioners usually don't pay national insurance, for example, because they're not working. So there's, there's lots going on here. Of course, he did his interviews yesterday, giving very little away, but everybody putting their, their tuppence worth in, whether it's two pence off national insurance or whatever, I love to say, did. yeah, I, I, it was kind of in my head. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, you know, we'll see what happens on Wednesday. But certainly, I think we can, the, the usuals we can expect, we can expect some more money on the price of a pint. Uh, fuel is something that people will look at very, very closely as well. And uh, cigarettes will almost, almost certainly go up in price. But the big question is, where are their tax cuts? He's hinted at those. He said that he wants to do them because that's what Conservatives do and that's what Conservatives should do. But at the same time, a lot of public pressure saying, actually, believe it or not, about 70% of people say they're happy with the tax burden as it is. This is, is really interesting, Holly. Pete, you're absolutely spot on. Um, it, uh, you know, we've got the highest tax burden in 70 years, which is completely untory like before we get to anything else. What I found fascinating slash boring is in the old days, you had, a, you had a budget and it just happened. Now they seem to brief the whole time. I am absolutely convinced, and I know what Nick thinks, that the majority of British people are increasingly more switched on than our politicians give them credit for. I've spoken to many people who have said, actually, we don't want a tax cut because we know we're going to have to pay for it further down the line, which is really unlikely. So this is, this is my question to you. Does Hunt do something to try and buy votes and screw us up further down the line? Or does he play fiscal responsibility, at which point everybody will go, they're a busted flush anyway, but his hands are tied. Totally tied. I think you'll see a bit of a pragmatic budget. Actually, you saw him at the weekend on all of the TV uh, stations being pragmatic, taking that kind of middle, down-the-road approach. Yes, people want tax cuts. I mean, I certainly go out campaigning a lot and people can feel the impact of the cost of living and What about crisis. further... Do you not think those people know that further I down the line they're going to have to pay it back? Yeah, I think the pandemic think, taught people that. I think people it? are realistic and I think they know the reason they're paying more tax now is because we have to pay for the pandemic. However, I think people would like to see a little bit of a reward for the pain they've had to experience in in recent years. But without a doubt, Jeremy Hunt is his style to be sent Mm. And I think that is the right thing at the moment because we're living through such extraordinary times and we still have to pay for the pandemic and there's still other pressures that need to be paid for as well. Do you I think... Mean, sorry, go on. Sorry, I was just going to say Holly's absolutely right in that there is a lot of pressure here, but it's interesting as well. People want public services to be really good as well and they're actually thinking maybe we should pay for them. But also some people are saying, well, what about the value for money? We've got high taxation. Where are the good public services? That contract with the government seems to be broken. That's exactly what I was going to say. The You know, will voters really notice a one pence one percent difference enough, i don't think it's coming quick enough we asked viewers this morning should the government prioritize cutting taxes in the spring budget this week and tony got in touch to say we don't want tax cuts we want public services mm. that can actually function i mean and that's a really really interesting point but also we're paying a lot of tax at the moment and the public services yeah. aren't functioning so if we pay a bit more you know is the efficiency there what about reform Where's the government that will really do that? And I mean, where's Streeting, the health, uh, Shadow Health Secretary, has said that there's real reform that's needed in the health service to make it efficient because it's got a lot more money over the past few years and things just aren't getting better. So all those kind of debates, really the debates, the fundamental debates about how our society runs and what the government does, that always comes up very, very much at an election, of course, but also at a budget. It's very interesting as well. Um, one of the big things the Labour Party have been saying for months and months and months is we're going to cut the nom-dom tax, right? And I think, and I could be wrong, that's three billion quid. And yet the Labour Party, to be fair, have said that everything they're going to do, change the army, change education, change the energy, is down to this non-dom tax cut, whether that works or not. 
uh, rumours over the weekend that, that Hunt might be nabbing that off them as well, apparently. Yes, I think he probably will. It's very, Yes, very I think he probably will. Uh, it's interesting because the... Uh, the what are they going to do? How are they going to pay for everything then? Because that was theirs. Well, he needs to find £9 billion, but it's interesting from Labour, they always say through gritted teeth, we're absolutely delighted that they've stolen our <laughs> policy. It's really great the government's <laughs> doing what we want to do. So, uh, yeah, it'll be interesting to see what happens. But certainly the non-DOM issue would neutralise it for the Conservative Party. It would take the pressure off Rishi Sunak whose wife used to be a non-dom, and Keir Starmer keeps bringing that up again and again and again. So very, very interesting. Labour keeps saying, we're not going to tell you what we're going to do until our manifesto, because the government will steal it. Mm. Here's a prime example of a, of a policy <clears throat> that's actually pretty popular with the public, that it looks as if the Conservatives may well do in the next couple of days. Holly, where's that clear water going to come mm. in then between Labour and the Tory party. Over the weekend, a bit of friendly fire from Jacob Rees-Mogg, who said, well, if this is a budget that Rachel Reeves could deliver, then what's the point? Yeah, I think there is, there's an element of that, but actually there is a kind of an agreement about the pragmatic kind of economic direction we have to take to pay for the, the consequences of the last couple of years. What I would say is, and I hope what this budget does, is set out a vision ahead of the election, which will set that clear water between Labour and Conservative. Oh, oh. Well, I think the Conservatives will set forward a vision about how to make public services more efficient. I think you're absolutely right on that. You have to have that conversation about wider reform. But I think as well it will te also set that course for tax cuts and growth in the coming years as Do well. Do you think... Um you know, for us nerds, you know, it's exciting. There's an election coming. And we talk constantly about how, you know, the people who are out there struggling to pay their bills probably look at politicians and think, what the hell? You call him pragmatic. Would it be fair to say they are just a busted flush? And and let me be perfectly honest, that doesn't, doesn't mean that the Labour Party will get it right or that they can finance this stuff. And the reality is, I'm sure, much more difficult. But what I get the sense of feeling is they could give us all a million pounds on next on Wednesday and it wouldn't make any difference. They they look to me to be tired and out of ideas. That's how I see it right now. I think as a voter. Yeah, whoever wins the election inherits a very difficult situation economically. Yeah. Yeah, right. And actually, you know, so it's gonna be difficult for whoever's in power. I go out knocking on doors most weekend and talking to people, and there certainly is a sense of frustration, but I think that frustration would be there, whichever government was in power, because we've had a recession, we've had war in Ukraine, which has left to, le led to inflation. So I think people are frustrated, but I think this is an opportunity to set a fresh vision and actually draw a line. But, but, but this fresh vision, so the, I, here it says that Tory voters blame Sunak. And six out of ten Tory voters blame Rishi Sunak and the pragmatic, boring Jeremy Hunt, right? Whatever we think about what went before them, Sunak came here with his five promises, I'm going to turn the world... We are in a far worse position. We, we can't continue to use the pandemic, Pete, from now till the end of time. Rishi Sunak but they will. Said he, they I will. know, but Rishi Sunak said he changed everything. It's, he, the party's worse off, the government's worse off, the country's worse off. Uh, he, that's how I see it. Is that unfair? No, it's not. And I think a lot of the public feel that. You've cited that poll, though, that says even six in ten Conservative voters yeah. blame Hunt and uh, Sunak for, the, uh, for where the economy is. And the problem is that when you link those things, like the fall in the rate of inflation, or, the, or it's less bad than it was, it's now 4% rather than 11.4%, um, to the actions of Rishi Sunak, well, people say, well, you've got to take the rough with the smooth. The bad stuff about the economy is your responsibility as well. So there's a lot that I think people are very annoyed about. I think this is a time in our lives, certainly in my political life, where more people are annoyed, including Conservative voters, than ever before. Yeah, I agree. And I think there is a sense of that, you know, the, the times are changing. Labour has been ahead consistently in the polls for two years now at about 20%. Conservatives have never been ahead in any published poll for two years. We can see which way the wind is blowing here. Jeremy Hunt will do all he can on Wednesday to try to claw some of that back. I think that gap will probably narrow between now and the election. But if Labour don't win, I'll be really surprised. What are they going to run this election on then? It's not going to mm. be on budget. It's not going to be on uh, fiscal policy. Mm. It's going to lean to, more towards, do you think, culture war issues then? A little bit. Um, I think they will try to say that they're, they have, what, certainly with, the, uh, with inflation going down, they'll say, look, we've, we've attempted in, to turn the economy around. That was always the big gamble. Will it be on immigration? Possibly, yeah. I think that'll be part of it as well, on small boats. I mean, they've got them down by a third, but not stop the boats. But it's really interesting how, um, I think, you know, the big gamble was always the economy, but we're in a situation where a lot of people will be coming off fixed-term mortgages. There'll be a lot of people in a worse economic state 
by the time the election comes. So when that election is called, could well be brought into that in terms of the fa those factors. A lot of conservative backbenchers I'm speaking to say, why not just go for May, just get it done. But I still think it'll be November. I think I think it's a really good point as well. I think I think that, that people are more switched on, I, I said at the beginning, than they were in the past, Holly, right? Yeah. You look at what Pete said, two years leading, absolutely accept that. But I think whether it's the pandemic or whether it's people's opinions of our politicians in general, which is at an all-time low and I'm hardly surprised, I think people are more cynical. I don't think there'll be a particularly big turnout at the general election. They are, I've said it, and that terrifies me because I believe in democracy. Yeah, I think you're right, but I think campaigns, a lot can change in a short campaign. Oh, come and on, you're holding you on know. to it. Come on. No, look, at, look at 2017. Look at 2017. Yeah. Theresa May was, what, 20 points ahead? Mm. Was, she was home in a boat. Then it, she was then what? Home in a boat. <laughs> of course she was, yeah. What, and then, from France? Well, sorry, yeah. that's a Northern Ireland phrase. Is it? And then, home yeah, in a boat. Home in a boat. And then uh, we got to the stage where, you know, Jeremy Corbyn nearly won the election. So it, it, things can't change. Sorry, Holly, mm -hmm. I interrupted you. Yeah, but you've got, you've got different dividing lines as well. And I thought what Rishi did the other day with his statement on Friday evening was a very significant moment in terms of what the election is going to be fought on. I think you're right. I think in terms of the economy, there's going to be some similarities between Labour and Conservative. So there has, has to be some differences. And actually, I think they're also really pushing on the Rwanda policy and trying to get legislation through Parliament as well to get something yeah, done work, finally. It? Still, and at least it's felt like there's been at least a week or two now when we haven't spoken about back, Rwanda. Back in the Lords today. Oh my God. Report, you, you, report could get, stage. you could get 500 people on one plane if you can find a plane that wants to go and it's cost 400 billion. Don't get me on that. That's ludicrous. Um, you two then, a couple of political nerds, must be really excited this week. It's the budget. Does that like really get the juices flowing for you two? <laughs> it does. Massively. It, 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 it genuinely it does. Look at it. Yeah. Oh, it's really magic. sad. Yeah. Really sad. Well, hopefully we'll talk to you about it more during the week, Peter. Thank Thanks, you so gang. much. Thank you. Uh, and Conservative Councillor Holly Whitbread. Thank you.